Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to do a comparison between the 6500 watt inverters and the EG4 18K PV. So more specifically the EG4 6500 EX, uh, how it stacks up compared to the 18K PV. Uh, the EG4 6500 has a higher voltage range, so that would be the largest difference. But this will uh, also compare the other versions also in most other aspects. So uh, the, how this is relevant is I get, this is probably the most asked question I get uh, about this, the 18K PV, is how a pair of the 6500 watt inverters stack up against it. And so that would be the MPP version or the Sun Gold version or the EG4 version. But more recently, there is an upgrade program that uh, EG4 has going on. So during the making of this video anyway, uh, that, that they'll give you a credit for their 6500 watt inverters that you've bought in the past towards one of these. So I've got even more uh, of those questions recently. But yeah, I've been getting them steady since uh, I released my first video on that. So it definitely is my most asked question. So I figured I would make a video on it. Also, I should mention that this isn't a completely fair comparison. This is a hybrid inverter. The 18K PV can do... Uh, lots of other things that the 6500 can't with grid connectivity. So it can assist with loads. It has a 200 amp pass through. So I think most of the people that are asking me this and emailing or messaging are wanting to know how they stack up against each other just in an in a off-grid setting where you're using this, if anything, if you're using the grid at all, it's as a bypass. So that's how I'm going to be comparing the two. So instead of putting them both in a ring and having them battle it out, <laughs> I'm going to list the specs between the two inverters, and I'll put the link down below. You guys can check on it also. And you can also leave me more questions if you want to know any more comparisons between these, because obviously I'm going to miss a lot of stuff. And uh, any, if you already have had both of them, if you guys have noticed any differences that I don't mention, yeah, let me know in the comments. Also, these aren't in any particular order. It's just however I scribbled it on my list. So first up would be voltage. The EG4 version, I mentioned this a little bit before, but the EG4 version of the 6500 watt inverters, the EG4 6500EX, has 500 volts allowable open, open circuit voltage. So reaching their maximum voltage is not a problem. So uh, it's, they can take 8,000 watts of solar each unit. So a pair of them is going to have 16,000 watts of solar, and you can get there with that 500 volts pretty simply. This can use 18,000 watts of solar, so a little bit more wattage on the 18K PV, hence the name. Um, and also, you, it has 600 volts allowable open circuit, so a little bit more open circuit voltage, and that does help when you're adding that much solar to it to be able to run your strings. So in cold weather, uh, that can really help. You can get towards where I have mine run now, I have them run right at 500 volts. So in case of cold weather, it is going to spike up a little bit in my area, but not a severe amount. But some of that's going to depend on where you live. In cold weather, it will spike up, obviously. But if you're comparing the two, this can take in more solar wattage than the two, than the pair of the 6500 watt inverters. Um, so that is going to matter in some cases. So if you are wanting to charge and use your loads heavily, at the same time, then the more solar you have, the better. So that could be a, I, I'm going to be saying this a lot in the different comparisons. For some people, that could be a game changer. That could be the thing that, uh, that they were looking for. For others, they'd say 16,000 watts is fine for me. So I, I'm going to be comparing, again, lots of these different things together. So that's one to keep in mind. This can take in 2,000 watts more of solar. It actually can take in more solar than that, but usable, you're looking right at uh, 18,000 watts versus 16,000 watts on the 6500s. So from here, I'm going to go to install. So the install of the 6500 watt inverters first. So if you're using another version, so let's say you're not using the EG4 version of the 6500s, to be able to get the four gauge wire that the manual specifies into the AC input or output, you really have to spend some time. It is not easy. I've gone over this in other videos, and I'll try to show it here in the screen if I can put something on there. 
but it's not easy. It's extremely tight to get that wire in there. It can be done if you spend enough time and you, uh, you know, you're patient enough, you can do it. Um, the EG4 version has larger terminals. It makes it much easier overall to get the AC input and output in. They have different PV connections, the EG4 and the Sungolds, um, and the Sungolds and MPPs. But uh, either one, as far as the PV, is not easy or not difficult to wire, I should say. Then when it comes to uh, breakers and external things and everything that you need in order to do that, you, you are going to have to purchase. You can get a bundle from EG4 with 6500, so that does have a lot of that in it. So the PV disconnects, the breakers, all that. Whereas if you go over to the 18K, wiring is a lot more simple. Uh, the connections are easier. The wiring cabinet's really large. You don't have any problem with that. The PV input is very simple also where you put the solar in. The breakers and disconnects are included with the unit. So that's a big contrast there. The hanging of the, the unit is probably the most difficult. So you are going to need somebody to help you put it on the wall. Aside from that, everything about the install of this, even though it's larger and looks a little more intimidating, the install of this is simpler, other than getting it on the wall with a friend or a helper. Also, I should mention while I'm making this video that Signature Solar has come out with a power distribution panel for the 6500 watt inverters, so otherwise known as a PDP. And that looks like it comes with everything you would need. So like I was mentioning before with this, this has disconnects, this has breakers. So that would have, it looks like, uh, everything that you would need for and essentially a wire way for underneath the 6500 watt inverters. So it looks really cool. I'll put a photo in it in this video here and put a link to that also. But that would eliminate some of the extras that you would have uh, when you're wiring the 6500 watt inverter. So looks like a really good idea on their part. This one should be short, but the 18K PV is outdoor rated. The 6500 watt inverter is not. So uh, for certain people, depending on space or where they want to install this, that may be something that tips the scale. So the, six, the 18K PV uh, is outdoor rated. They just recommend not to put it in sunshine because it can bleach the screen and ruin everything. So if you're on the northern side, if you got a little cover, I would do that. But uh, yeah, this is outdoor rated. So that's something to consider for sure. So the next would be software. The menu on the 18K PV is easy to navigate. Everything's right there. You can see what's going on. The 6500 watt inverters, you can get to the things you need to. Uh, once you get used to the menu, you can navigate it. Uh, the contrast between the two, they're completely different. Uh, but again, the 18K PV is easier overall, I should say. So on to monitoring. So the 6500 watt inverters, I didn't use any monitoring apps on mine. They come with an app called Watch Power. And other people choose to purchase another app called Solar Assistant to use with them. With both apps, you can make changes and monitor what's going on with the inverter. So for the 18K PV, it comes with its own wireless dongle and an app designed for the unit. And it's a really nice app. Uh, I've talked about it in another video, but I'm not somebody that pours over all the graphs and monthly usages and everything all the time, but it does have that in there. Um, and what I look at, if I'm going to look at something, is maybe what I'm using at the moment or how much PV I'm bringing in at the moment. And if you have closed battery communication, you can look at battery level and all that, obviously. So yeah, really nice app overall. I should mention that you can get, I should say, purchase a cellular dongle for this unit. So for those people that don't have internet access or Starlink or whatever, if they're in a remote location, but they do have a cell tower, that they can get even a moderate signal. The cellular dongle works really well. I, uh, I am not in the best area. I've talked about this in another video. I'm not in the best cell area, especially in my metal shop here, and it has no issue. So yeah, the cellular dongle might be an option for people also if they're interested. But yeah, that would be another difference between the two units, having that cell option. So yeah, following that tech theme, then firmware updates. After I did the first firmware update with the 6500s, I kind of knew what I was doing. It's just a little more time consuming than you would have here. So it wasn't too bad after I, I figured it all out. 
But uh, yeah, with the 6500s, it's more of a hassle to do firmware updates. Uh, with the 18K PV, you can have EG4 do it for you remotely, or you could do it yourself. And then the LCD screen, you do have to do yourself here. I have another video on that. But you have to plug a flash drive into the unit itself here, but that only takes a couple minutes. So overall, if you're doing a firmware update, the 18K PV is easier and faster than the 6500s for sure. So idle consumption is the next one. Uh, the 6500 EXs that I tested were 82 watts each. So for a pair of those, you were a little over 160 watts total. This unit here, the 18K PV, was 70 watts when I tested it. So next up would be surge and wattage, I guess, all in one. So the 18K PV has a 12,000 watt continuous output, and the 6500 watt inverters, obviously, if you have a pair of them, you're at 13,000 watts. So this is where it got interesting for us. We never ran things at a continuous 13,000 watts. If we needed anything, it was a little bit of headroom. So most of the time, while we're paying attention to it, and we're, you know, it's always a balance if you're running a whole house on these units. So what we found was if we're running something, it's going to be at 10,000 watts. And what, where it's made it easier with this unit is that we needed some headroom if something were to start up like the well or so when we already had 10,000 watts or 9,000 watts on the unit. And that's where this has actually done better than the two 6,500 watt inverters. When it's already handling heavy loads, it can start a motor up. And so that has actually made it easier for our household in the way we use it. So technically, yes, a thousand watts less of continuous, but for us, we needed just that extra surge and that headroom. So overall, this has been easier uh, in the way we run it for sure. So next up would be MPPTs, so solar inputs. The 6,500 watt inverters have, they'll have four if you have a pair of them, whereas the 18K PV has three. The 18K PV's three inputs work for me. I, uh, I have three different arrays, so it actually works really nice. I have one facing slightly east so that I can get some morning sun, one due south, and one a little bit west. So yeah, having at least three in our setting works great. The four, I guess if you had four separate arrays in four different areas, it would be helpful. A lot of people have one large array, so that's really not going to matter. They're just you know, worried about wiring it in. But yeah, if you have four separate arrays, maybe that would be make the 6500s the winner in this category. Uh, but yeah, having at least three for our setting is really helpful. So I'm not going to get into all the different efficiency ratings of the two units. This unit overall is more efficient. So whether it be idle consumption, like I mentioned before, or the PV input, the MPPT efficiency of this unit, how it converts sunshine into power is more efficient. So yeah, again, feel free to look at the specs on the links that I'm going to leave below. So the next up would be sound or noise. So between the two units, this is the quieter unit. And so this is actually because people discuss this a lot more than you'd think. Um, but yeah, sound matters to people, and there's a reason why. It's not just the fact that it could be irritating to some people the louder the unit is, but sometimes these are in a living area or close to your bedroom or for whatever reason. A lot of people ask this question. So this unit is quieter overall. So I've mentioned it in past videos, but unless you are bringing in 6,000 watts at least of solar, or you are using 6,000 watts of solar, you are not going to hear the unit at all. It's completely quiet. What's also interesting, and I mentioned this on a forum recently, is that you could be bringing in 10,000 watts of solar and if you're charging with 5,000 and using 5,000, it's still silent. So yeah, it's quiet overall. And then as it picks up and as the fan ramps up, it is louder. So it's not a ninja, right? <laughs> it's, still, it's still trying to cool the unit. So it is going to make some noise. And then as you're making max PV, if you're bringing in max solar that the unit can take, it, is, it does ramp up the fan for sure. Whereas the 6,500 watt inverters, uh, the fan is always on, so it is a little bit lower. They are quieter as they're not bringing in PV or using a lot of AC power. 
uh, but they do make a continuous noise all the time and it's it, it can be loud and then definitely loud as they're bringing in a maximum amount of sunshine there solar they get pretty loud they can almost sound like they're about to take off so if somebody just installed them they might be a little shocked by how loud they are uh, but yeah overall between the two units this is a much quieter unit so the last item on my list would be warranty if you purchase the 6500 EXs from Signature Solar and you purchase the batteries, the EG4 batteries with them, I believe the warranty is five years. And without the batteries, it's three years. And the 18KPV is a 10 year warranty. So that's going to about wrap it up for this one, guys. Like I mentioned before, I'm sure there's other things that could be covered on this. And I may cover other topics in the future in comparison between the two units. So I should mention that given the two choices, I would definitely go with the 18K PV. The overall build quality of the inverter is much better. And the list, like I, I mentioned some of the things on the list, definitely matter to me. The weatherproof part and some other parts probably aren't a big, as big of a factor to me, but they do play a part for sure. Yeah, so this is definitely what I would choose. So before I go, I wanted to mention that this video wasn't designed to discourage people. So as you guys have seen probably in some of my previous videos, I ran my household on the MPP, the LV6548s, and then I switched to the 6500EXs for the higher voltage range. Both of them ran my household and they do the job. They're a good off-grid option. So I don't want this video to discourage people and them think that, the, you know, that solar is some kind of elitist club. So unless they can afford an 18K PV or a Solark, then they can't get into solar. So if you already have 6,500 watt inverters, you know this isn't meant to discourage you. Uh, I wanted to give the facts from both inverters for people that were interested in all the comments that I've gotten. But yeah, I want people to feel as if they can get into solar at you know whatever kind of income level they're at. That's why I show the uh, EG4 3,000 watt inverter. I want people to be able to get in wherever they can and grow from there or stay there and at least know that they have some power, right? And the, the 6500s can power your home. So yeah, I wanted to end with that note and I appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned.